This is a book ball summary of the book How to Change by Katie Milkman. If you've ever followed a self-help program, you're probably familiar with it. Having audacious goals is something you should do. It's no secret that habits are important. Writing in your bullet journal every evening is part of your evening routine. In the morning, you make a long list of things to do. Still, you are unable to reach your goals. How should you proceed? How can you reach your goals or transform your life if you use tools that lead to positive change? Several common human flaws contribute to our inability to change, including laziness, impulsivity, and procrastination. As a result, they lay out a simple strategy designed to overcome each flaw, which will keep us from reaching our goals. A fresh start can make it easier to change. New Year's resolutions are often made because it's a fresh start and ringing in a new year make daunting plans seem feasible and past mistakes seem far away. But it's not superstitious to think that starting a new year will suddenly make your goals easier to achieve. It's not superstitious to think that it's easier to pursue our goals in the new year. It's true. In fact, this rule doesn't apply in early January, but after any kind of milestone or fresh start like a birthday, the start of a new semester, or the Monday of any run-of-the-mill week. The author and her colleagues discovered that when they looked at data from campus fitness centres. But why? Why do certain dates motivate us so effectively? In a word, a fresh start changes our perspective. It puts distance between our previous, failed attempts at change and the new one we're about to make. It wipes the slate clean. That's why some dates are more effective than others for motivating change. The bigger the milestone, the more encouraged we feel. In a piece of famous music from the 1960s, Mary Poppins advised the world that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And when it comes to handling impulsivity, that advice is well worth listening to. You see, there's a strategy that the author calls temptation bundling. It's a way of pairing a pleasurable activity with a demanding but worthwhile task in order to make the work seem more appealing just as Mary Poppins sweetened some unpleasant medicine with a bit of sugar. Fresh starts can be motivating, but not all changes for the better. Watch out for fresh starts like birthdays, new semesters and anniversaries, and capitalise on them by undertaking something new. But be careful not to backslide on your old, established routines. You're trying to change, but you find yourself falling prey to impulsivity. Impulsivity is also known as present bias and it leads you to favour trivial but immediate pleasures over larger, long-term rewards. Luckily, impulsivity can be tackled. One strategy is to pair a pleasurable activity with a demanding but worthwhile task, such as watching trashy TV while jogging on a treadmill, or eating your favourite candy while studying. Gamification makes real-world tasks more appealing by adding some game-like elements, such as leaderboards, points and rewards. At Wikipedia, Gamification was used to motivate the enormous team of voluntary editors and increase their participation by 20%. Use commitment devices to overcome procrastination. Everybody procrastinates. We put off filing our taxes, going to the gym and saving for retirement. We know we should probably make a start today, but what's another hour, another day, another week? In isolation, not much. But soon the time compounds. And eventually, we find ourselves stressed, disappointed, and underprepared yet again. In our worst moments, it can feel like something we're destined to do. We've often procrastinated for so long that it's come to seem inevitable. But by using commitment devices, we can overcome our tendency to procrastinate and start making a start today. Omar Andaya, the president of the Green Bank in the Philippines, offered a couple of hundred customers a locked savings account as an experiment. So, they could add money to it, but they wouldn't be able to make deductions until a certain balance had been reached, or an agreed date had passed. In other words, it was a classic commitment device, a system designed to restrict freedom in order to limit temptations. And it was a huge success. The customers saved 80% more than the following year, compared with regular customers. You can use commitment devices to beat procrastination, including cash commitment devices and public pledges. These devices make procrastination expensive and create a powerful incentive to keep working hard. Laziness is a common vice, but good habits can help you defeat it. The fables of the ant and the grasshopper and the little red hen teach us that hard work pays off. When you wake up in the morning, you probably have a routine that you follow unthinkingly. 
If you're clever about it, you can make unpleasant behaviors like tough workouts or intense study sessions every bit as automatic as the elements of your 8am routine. This isn't just a hunch. Neuroscientists have shown that the more ingrained a habit becomes, the less we rely on the parts of our brains involved in reasoning, like the prefrontal cortex, and the more we depend on the sections of the brain responsible for action and motor control. So, how can you harness this information to make it easier to change? It's easy. You need to make a sustained and deliberate effort to turn good behavior into a habit. If you want to start sitting up straight, practice sitting with a better posture until it becomes second nature to you. Reward yourself for following through. We humans like to help each other, but giving unsolicited advice can prove to be a serious obstacle to change. Lauren Eckreis Winkler noticed that everyone she spoke to had tips and opinions on the best way to proceed. But why didn't they just follow it themselves? To Eckreis Winkler, this was a puzzle. Some of the people who were telling her how to spend less had racked up huge debt themselves. Some of the people sharing advice on saving money didn't even have a dime set aside for a rainy day. But what puzzled Eckreis Winkler most was that lots of advice these people were giving was actually good. So why didn't they just follow it themselves? The answer, she realized, is that people lack confidence. Eckreis Winkler's research shows that giving advice can boost confidence. So consider forming advice clubs with friends or colleagues. You'll be surprised how clear-sighted and confident you can be when you imagine it's someone else you're advising. Your peers change you, so choose them carefully. So, your friends can unintentionally hamper your progress if they offer you unsolicited advice. But that doesn't mean your social circle is always a problem when you're trying to change. In fact, your friend group can be one of the greatest resources you have, if you know how to make proper use of it. One of the reasons our peers matter so much is that we humans are naturally susceptible to social pressures. Now, this is often presented as a failing. Remember being urged to resist peer pressure as a kid? But that's only half the story. Social pressure can make you behave badly, but the right friends can keep you on the straight and narrow. Scott Carroll, a UC Davies economist, found that his twin brother's grades were outstripping his own in many areas. He guessed that the decisive factor in his brother's good grades was his new peer group, which motivated him to start hitting the books as he'd never done before. Carroll decided to crunch the numbers examining the academic performance of over 3,500 first-year cadets. What he found was that for every 100-point increase in the average verbal SAT score of a squadron, a cadet's own GPA rose by 0.4 grade points on a 4.0 scale. That's the difference between getting Bs and getting straight As. When you choose whom to spend your time with, you can influence your own success. You can emulate the success of others by asking them for their strategies. What's your most important key takeaway? Please comment down below and share the video if you like it. Check out these other two videos. Thank you and until next time.